Welcome to another episode of Geeky Gentlemen. I am Sid Bartu. Joining me today is Milan Jeftik and the Comics Kid 2099, also known as Milan Jeftik, the Russian comic book geek, and um, Ruben. Hey. Can I say your last name? Is it cool if I say your last name? Uh, yeah, you can if you want. Ruben DeBoard. DeBroad. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I should have asked that before <laughs> asking if I had permission to say it. <laughs> yeah, so, so Geeky Gentlemen, a- we're not frightened of saying our last names. For, partly <laughs> because we're both equally psychotic enough to not be frightened of stalkers. And nobody really watches this show. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's okay. Hey, we're, we're slowly rising in popularity. Yes. Apparently and so. In any case, um, before we get into the topic of the episode, I want you, the listener, to know that you can now download episodes of Kiki Gentlemen on archive.org. There's a link in the description to download this episode. New episodes will be uploaded uh, along with the YouTube episode. Old episodes of Kiki Gentlemen can be uploaded by request. Just leave a comment on the episode, and I will put it on archive.org and let you know about it. All right. Anyway, all that being said, let's go ahead and talk about what we're talking about tonight, which is... Probably the dumbest movie ever made, Kung Pao Under the Fist. The dumbest and the best. <laughs> it's, de- it's definitely the best dumbest movie I've ever seen. I disagree. This is not a dumb movie, gentlemen. The this, gauntlet's already been thrown. This is a cinematic classic above all others in the art of cinema making. This, I, I almost agree with you. This um, is better than Citizen Kane by far. Yeah. This yeah. makes Citizen Kane look like a small man with a small penis fucking <laughs> a hedgehog. Okay, anyway, uh, now that the audience has been completely alienated, maybe the rise in the popularity of Kiki Gentleman has something to do with Milan's absence from the show as of late. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my musings aside, no, I like, don't get me wrong, when I say it's the dumbest movie ever, I completely stand by that, but it doesn't change the fact that I love it to death. This, I, I saw this movie when it came out in theaters, I remember laughing my ass off in the movie theater. I had my dad buy me the DVD. I still have that same copy on DVD. And I watched this movie. You know how, like, as a kid, you'll finish a movie, then go right back to the beginning and watch it again and do that, like, three or four times a day for, like, three weeks after you get a movie? Uh That's what I did with this movie. And I've seen this movie too many fucking times to the point where... I could probably redub the entire film on my own. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to put a little caveat and say, while I'm not going to bar anyone from quoting the movie, I really don't want this to turn into an entire episode of us just quoting the movie. Well, I'll just cross out all my notes here. No. <laughs> right? No, this is a movie, it's so hard when you talk about it with someone, When anytime I find somebody who has seen this movie, in about three seconds, it devolves into me quoting all of my favorite scenes. Uh, it is, yep. it's that kind of movie, it's so hard not to do that. It is, it's such a ridiculous, ridiculous film, and it's got so many memorable, stupid lines and moments that it just, it, it sticks with you, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, um, and, okay, so, how did you two come into contact with this film? Because I've talked about seeing it in theaters and stuff. 
Um, I uh, I saw it. I did not see it in theaters. Uh, I saw it on TV one day. It was pretty close to the beginning of the movie. Uh, I think shortly after the baby finished kicking everyone's butts, and then right around the point when it starts rolling down the hill, and then the old lady like picks up the baby, and I'm thinking, okay, she's gonna raise the baby as her own, and then she like rolls it down the rest of the hill. That was right around the point where I I fell in love with this movie. I said, this is. <laughs> A fantastic thing. This is completely unlike anything you're expecting it to be, and that's a good thing. And I, I think I watched the whole thing that night, uh, and then uh, I actually got this movie for my birthday several years ago, and when our family switched from a small console TV to a bigger screen TV, uh, this was the first movie that we watched on that big screen TV. So like, it's always kind of got, it's in the back of my mind as like it holds a special place because of that. Um, which is not necessarily the movie you would think of as like this is the big screen experience, but uh, it's it's that for me. Mm -hmm. How about you, Milan? How did you first come into contact with this, Milan? Hello. Well. Okay, Milan is Milan. How I first got in contact? I thought I was better than this film. I thought myself more intellectually superior. Was there a sequel to that, or was that like the last like that was scene just a joke? Bullshit. But anyway, my little brother found this film, and he and he, he implored me, Milan, watch this film, watch this film. It is by far the greatest piece of cinema ever crafted by apes. Well, well I didn't say all that. Not just you know, I'm just summing up what you what you were trying to say, and I was like, no, this is a stupid. A stupid film for stupid people, and anyone who likes this is stupid. And then I watched the film and I shit my pants. <laughs> Laughter and joy. No, I just shit my pants. Oh. And I think I came a bit. Uh, it was the best. I like the bit where he milked a cow. Yeah, he milked the yeah, cow. Yeah, yeah. And then like, he punched him in the face. Yeah, then he had like an awesome like kung fu fight. It was with a CGI cow, the best thing in the world. Yeah. Um. I, I don't know, man. This this movie just, like, it has this reputation where, like... It, I think Milan really tapped into something with it, though. Because, like, you hear the idea of it is, oh, it's this guy, and he's, like, see, he's green-screened himself into a kung fu movie, and it's just a bunch of stupid lines. Thank and it is cool. totally that. But there's something, like, anti-intellectual proofness to it. Because, oh, fuck yeah, man. I mean... Yeah, yeah there, there are so many things where, like, I feel like people try to dismiss this movie, but, like, if you really just give it a chance, it will, at the very least, make you g giggle. If not, start, like, busting a gut laughing. You have to, like, pause the movie to breathe kind of stuff. The thing is, you're expect Like, you hear the tales of this film. You hear the lore that surrounds this film. And that apparently it kills your intellectual intrigue. And that is a lie. That is a lie, Ian. Do you understand? <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah, and I mean, there's there's still a lot of people that don't like it. And those say, people oh, have stupid. never had their dick sucked. Um, but <laughs> okay. It, okay. Yeah, but anyway, this, this is a film that's so retarded it becomes brilliant. Because it is a white man. I think you might be onto something there, though. Green screening really himself into a classic so Chinese movie. Yeah, it's so stupid that it just gets under like any kind of of standards you could have for anything, and just gets at a very primal thing of making you laugh. It, like it instantly takes you back to elementary school with like farty armpit noises. <laughs> yeah, and you feel young again, and you're like and. Yeah, it's the best. It's the best thing in the world. It's like having your shoulders rubbed by a strong young man in film school. Mm -hmm. um, now, Steve Odenkirk, the guy that, that wrote, starred, directed, did all the voices except for the character Woe, who is the character with the one boob. Um, he, he did everything in this movie, uh, except the CG, I guess. Like, he... He's directed um, Ace Fincher Pet Detective. I didn't both know that. The, uh, yeah, both the Ev both the Bruce Almighty and Evan Almighty movies. Uh, he's done a couple other th other things here and there. I think he was one of the writers on Cowboys vs. Aliens. So yeah, like he's not had just an exceptional career or anything, but like he's got a very particular through line of ridiculous silliness 
but just somehow making it work. And Cowboys and Aliens is kind of the weird outlier there. Cowboys um, and Aliens is him going, you know what? I'm done with comedy. <laughs> I'm done I didn't with even... comedy. I'm going to do a serious film where James Bond and fucking uh, Han Solo fight aliens in, in cowboy cosplay. It's the best. I would have enjoyed Cowboy versus Aliens more if it was more like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> you know, uh, like, I, dude, you don't even know. I would so love to make other movies just like this thing. Like, how much fun would... I, I've talked to Bill about doing this for years. How much fun would it be to make this exact same premise, but with giant monster movies? Oh, yeah, that'd be fantastic. I was thinking about that. I, I want to know why this guy hasn't done this for other genres. Like, he could do this for science fiction. You know, imagine if he took, like, The Forbidden Planet and put himself in that movie. Or, the like you said... Was, look, guys, 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 look. That is a concept that could very easily be abused. And, like, this is a magical movie. This is something that somebody made... That's so retarded that it could only happen once. Because if if other be, if I this think be, might be on something. if this became a thing, it's just gonna be a, it's just gonna be Shia LaBeouf put into movies. But people on the internet who aren't funny or talented, making stupid jokes in the middle of monster movies, going like I oh, just badly green screened into a film, and go yeah I, I'm like that fucking compound movie. Are I smart? Please pay attention to me. See, it, it, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I, I do think there's but, the potential for abuse, but exactly. at the same time, I would but love this, to see it. Though. This movie, this is a, this is a, this movie was conceived on a blood moon during a ritual like, with the goat. Here's, here's the thing, though. Like he's already done the exact same kind of thing as far as taking something that should only work once, if at all, and turning it into a franchise that people love. Because while I was listing all of his, you know, major pictures that he's done, I forgot one franchise. The Thumb Thing. Yeah, I've heard about that. I've never seen any of those. Neither have I because it sounds stupid, but I've always been tempted because I know he's involved. Right. What's the, what, what, what's the Thumb Thing? You've never seen, like, those movies like Bat Thumb or Thumb Wars or, um... Like it's it's just the movie remade, but it's got like thumbs with faces and costumes on. What? Yeah, I, like I'll I'll send you a still image and I'll I'll put something on screen right now. Thirty forty seven. Um, someone type that down there, please. Uh, in the in the. This IM, man is an obvious that. art. This man is a genius. Um, Obviously. Like you know, speaking of, you know, we're talking about... I, I haven't seen any of those thumb things. I'm kind of afraid to. I'm afraid I would watch it and not like it. And then my my uh, reverence towards this guy uh, being... <laughs> I'm seeing this picture right now. My reverence toward him for Kung Pao, I'm afraid it would be tainted because of me not enjoying, uh, like, thumb wars. But now that I'm seeing this picture, I really want to watch it. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's it's the exact same kind of like before, stupid before, thing. Whoa, stop, stop. Before this joke gets lost to the ages, I'm just going to say you said taint, and it's funny. <laughs> um, I think it was lost to the ages once you waited. Um, <laughs> I know, but you know what? I don't care. Time is, a, time is an illusion, and so no, jokes no, are never please bad. Continue, please continue, Milan. Shut your mouth. I, uh... Yes. <laughs> You know, you were you were saying, Milan, that you think this kind of movie where someone's green screens himself into another movie would be abused. And I agree if other people did it. Uh, I'm mainly wondering why this guy didn't do it again. Uh, maybe he was thinking, like you said, like you can only, you know, kept, capture lightning in a bottle once. Uh, but yeah. I really would have loved to have seen him try his hand at least once or twice again, even if it wouldn't have been as good. Um, and you were mentioning, you know, the joke at the end about like all those scenes that are in the sequel. Uh, I think that, like, I remember when I watched this movie the first couple of times, I remember every time I would watch this movie, I would go on the Internet Movie Database and look to see if that sequel was actually happening, and I that didn't get it. That end point leaves I have news with for such you. hope, dude. Well, I, have, I have news for both of you well, and Mickey if he's still in the room. What was that, Ian? Apparently last year he's done, he did interviews saying it's going to happen. Oh, no. <gasps> I'm, Mickey, I'm both... Gunpow's getting a sequel! 
I'm I'm both like terrified and like excited because it could be hilarious or it could be like Pirates of the Caribbean where it's just repeating the same jokes that the first movie did. Yeah, the thing. The yeah, like I'm I'm a little nervous about, about it because I I did a lot of um. In, in, in. The terrifying what? part about this whole thing is that Jack Black might do a similar thing. Oh. Ugh. Just going, yeah. hey, I'm Jack Black. I'm getting slightly older, and I've lost that thing that made me funny. But, yeah, yeah. but anyway, I'm anyway. still in Hollywood. Um, Yay. Okay, dude, let me make my fucking point. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, I did a lot of research because I didn't want to have it turn into just us talking about things. And I read some interviews that he gave at the time. And, like, apparently the fact that he was dubbing everyone in and having them say a lot of really stupid things – just came through the process of needing to fill space in the movie. So the the prospect of trying to do a sequel to that, because that is something that is so lucky to have happened at all, right? Yeah. Um, like, just that, like, he was originally going to have other people do the voices, but just as they were going, making, you know, rough cuts of the movie, he's like, I'll just have them say some silly shit because he's good at improv. Um, this is the Rick and Morty method. Before the Rick yeah, and Morty method. Yeah, so just... He just made stuff up as he was going, and then they were like, no, wait, what do you mean cast other people? What do you mean new lines? No, we're keeping all of this. Those are those characters' voices. That's the dialogue. You can't change that now. So You've gone too I don't far. Know, like, yeah, I don't know if you could. Even if it's him, I don't know if you can make a sequel to this or if you can do it again. But at the same time, it's such a good concept that I really want to see him try. Have either of you ever seen the movie Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid? Mm, I think I've heard about it. It's a Steve Martin movie from 1982. I didn't realize it was that old. And it's kind of sort of a similar concept. Uh, I've never seen the whole movie. I've seen bits and pieces. But uh, Steve Martin took an old Humphrey Bogart movie and he put himself into parts of it. Uh, it's not exactly the same thing because there's more actors involved than just Steve Martin. Uh, like, he added a lot of people who are not from archival footage, but then there's quite a few actors who are from the original movie. Uh, but it's probably the only other thing that's even kind of similar to this, where uh, Steve Martin is putting himself in a film noir type movie, and it's black and white, and parts of it is Humphrey Bogart, parts of it is Steve Martin. And that's like the only other thing other than Kung Pao that I can think of that's even kind of in the same ballpark. And they're separated by 20 years. Uh, but that's something that I'm wondering if uh, uh, Steve Odekirk is uh, in any way influenced by that movie. I mean, I'd assume so. It's like it's really interesting uh, to talk about the, the technology behind this movie because – I don't know how influenced he could be because they had to really fucking innovate for this film. Oh, yeah. Like, I, once again, I was reading interviews with him. This, keep in mind, this came out in 2002. This had more special effects shots than Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Oh, wow. Yeah, it would, ha right? it would have to, though. Yeah, like, that's just really impressive. And unfortunately like i've always loved the the special effects and for their time they are brilliant completely groundbreaking it it proved a pipeline could be established and for a long time these were the methods that you've used we've developed new tools since but I, i've always really liked the effects for this movie this time when i watched it for this episode i watched it on my 4k tv and that's a mistake oh really uh yeah, the the effects when you can really see the close detail when there's when you lose a lot of the graininess, um, some of it r unfortunately breaks down. Like there's, um, I, I think the worst example because like you can pretty much the just tell where is, they, they. The thing cast. about this movie is that it's meant to be seen as grainy because, like, mm -hmm. you, it, this is a supposed to be an old school you know Chinese kung fu movie. Yeah, and how crazy is it that they they did they did more special effects than Star Wars: The Phantom Menace, for Christ's sake, right. and yet they they did that all to make it look like shit. Exactly. I mean, like <laughs> that's supposed to be the the entire joke. Like seeing this mm -hmm. movie in HD kind of defeats the point of the entire film. Yeah, but I mean, I just I was like I didn't even think about it when I was watching it because it's always held up for me before. Yeah. And so, like, I think the worst example is that scene where um. 
Wimp Low comes up to him when he's when he's training uh, with his shirt off, and he's like doing that weird like crouchy pose, and then goes to standing up. If you look at Steve Odekirk's head, it's clearly just a still image that they've like really poorly composited mm. and then blended over the original actor at that point because they couldn't get it to work with the um, with the the exposed skin. And like a lot of the shots where you see him, um, you know, carrying an old man, like that when he's carrying Ling's father, um, in the original footage, he's actually not wearing a shirt or anything because they needed to be able to just put his neck in wherever they could fit it, basically. Um, so it's just, I, 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 like I will say, it. Is, is, is based on innovations in cgi it's actually a really impressive really groundbreaking movie that people just kind of forget about i think the effects are really good for their time but it's it's kind of like watching king kong the original where it's like yeah people in theaters like lost their minds at this but now we laugh at how bad the effects are but even still some of the effects looking kind of shit just make it even a little more charming you know what this is an old joke but it has some sort of it literally ties back to everything we're talking about now. Well, Ian's talking about, you know, in you know, Citizen Kane. Mm-hmm. There is a scene where they drive. Oh, with the pterodactyls. Yes, there are pterodactyls in fucking in Citizen Kane, and they they just took footage from King Kong. <laughs> And it's yeah, it's literally fucking Kane. green screen. The first like use of fucking this is a it's amazing, isn't it? It all comes back together, doesn't it? Uh, like I, I'm yeah, t- I'm too out of it to make it sound interesting and put a word thing together that takes the ideas and makes them presentable. And no, we've context, talked about that before on this. You know like what I the, mean. the idea that nothing is perfect, that there's always going to be a flaw. And so Citizen Kane's kind of like that ultimate example where people hold it up to be the most perfect film ever made, but yet apparently fucking, um, what's his name in Citizen Kane has enough money to, to fund, you know, genetically engineering pterodactyls for his private <laughs> island. In 1930-something, when was this movie? Right, right. Um, Milan, I'm echoing a bit on your end. Oh, it's perfect. Um, it's it's one of those things where it's just like my God, nothing is perfect, and this movie, by no means, by no stretch of the imagination, is perfect. Like you can see, um, actors' heads kind of fading out at the top just because of how it was done and stuff, and that's unfortunate. That like little things, like the thing I guess, is, I, think I guess I, I don't I got know how the to point of this it, movie because when it's Ian, an I error got, that Ian, they made. Ian, uh, Ian, Ian, I think I got what you're trying to say. It's that. There's no such... This movie wasn't working with the concept, let's make this the perfect thing. This is a movie that just said, I just want to make people laugh. And the way I do that is by making something that makes me laugh. Now, that's Mm -hmm. a risk. You know, not a lot of people might find what you're trying to do funny. But this Mm -hmm. guy said, you know what? I'm I'm not going to... I don't care if it looks kind of shit. As long as it's ridiculous enough that it makes my fucking belly laugh and my and my asshole pucker and my balls itchy. Well, not itchy, but, you know, tingly with joy and my and my brain explode. with Milan, furons. fucking get to the point. <laughs> Nothing is perfect. And try no, to judge that. By, but by, by see, trying you, to you judge it by that standard. The point, so Milan. Shut up. Uh, anyway, Why are you so mean to me? Because you keep derailing the fucking conversation just to make stupid jokes. Well, well, Ian, we're, we're talking about Kung Pao. Yeah, I get that, well, but I'm well, trying to make a point, Milan. Damn. I, I, um, but but this is this, this is it. I'm the part of the brain that it's that's all dreams and madness, and Ian's the part of the brain that's all logic and like coldness. And this is why we okay, love each other. Dude, dude. Dude, fucking That's pump it. the brakes just a little bit. In. You're my Spock. Pump the brakes just a little bit, Milan, please. Anyway, um, no, I just I I think like I I'm kind of torn on the the effects not holding up because on one on one side it kind of makes it look even crummier, but at the same time they're not trying to make that element of it look crummy. They're trying to make that as 
as perfectly integrated as they can because they really do want you at times at least to think this is an old 70s kung fu movie um i actually didn't notice what you're talking about about how like at points like the head kind of is off center a little bit i didn't notice that but probably i wasn't paying enough attention like if you pointed it out to me if you said there's a specific scene and you know this is the the time stamp and look for his head to be like a still image i'd probably mm -hmm. notice it then but uh, because i wasn't told to look for it i didn't notice any of the special effects looking weird uh i still think like it, it's pretty solid uh you know we were talking about how it's a silly movie with dumb jokes but like i still think the special effects hold up pretty well and um you know, if you just showed this to someone in the middle of the movie and they didn't know that this is a white guy from 2002 putting himself into a kung fu movie from the 70s, then they might not know, I, I would think. Um, it, I think it holds up that well. Like, you know, with The Phantom Menace, you can tell that, uh, you know, this scene of this alien with two heads, obviously that's CG. Or the pod race, obviously that's 10 minutes of CGI that took him probably mm -hmm. like two years to do. But then, like, with this movie, like the scene where uh, Oda Kirk is stroking the girl's hair, like if you just oh that that shot is brilliant. Yeah, and then like at the end of the movie in the credits, it's showing you like the original scene with the actual guy doing it, and then it shows you Oda Kirk doing it on a green screen, and it's like holy cow, they put a lot of work into just like little All scenes the... like that. No, I agree. Some of the some of the stuff looks brilliant. There are just moments here and there where like. And again, this is the first time I've ever really noticed it beyond like some transparency issues. I, I linked you an image down below. Yeah, if you I want can to see it now. Yeah. He tried to touch the past with green screen, and he did it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks pretty damn brilliant, like I'd say 60% of the time. But as the technology, just as like the TV in my home has gotten better and better – it's looked not as good. I would even say uh, that's maybe a problem in general with technology getting so good. Like I've heard people say that they don't like Blu-rays because they can't go back and watch older movies in any older movie, like not just a movie like this, but like they say they can't go back and watch an older movie from the eighties because the Blu-ray experience, the sound and the picture is so amazing that it's so much easier to tell, Hey, that is, you know, you can see the strings on the spaceship or whatever. Um, and I think yeah, that's a problem yeah, just a, in general. Yeah, it is a real problem. And, and like, there are some movies you just should not watch in HD. Right. But at the same time, you don't think about it until it's too late, yeah. right? Um, and that's unfortunate. But, like, no, I, I do think the effects look really damn good, especially for the time. Yeah. Um, like, the, the cow somehow looks better than any of the agent smiths or neos <laughs> from the matrix sequel like just everything about that fight scene looks kind of awful like even right when it came out but the the cow looks like pretty damn good uh i i, I like the cow the cow looks great um it's, it's milk is a little too blobby but it's whatever. the best cgi cow i've ever seen in a movie well i'll give you that <laughs> <laughs> um was it you, Ian? I, I've heard somebody, and I can't remember who it was, so you may say this wasn't you, but somebody that I was listening to or reading something, they said they were so sick and tired of seeing, like, the Matrix parodies. And, you know, this was right around the time of the Matrix. Like, Matrix was 99. I don't remember when Reloaded came out, but it was probably just right before this. And this has two Matrix parodies in, like, one scene. There's the part where yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, the cow yeah. and the, the guy are uh, like in mid-kick and it spins around. And then also when the cow is squirting his milk, it's treating it like the bullets that Neo dodges. And I can't remember, was it you that said you were so sick and tired of Matrix parodies or was it someone else that I that I was thinking of? I've, I think Nostalgia Critic said that. Oh, okay. Uh, that might have been it, uh, yeah. Yeah, and like they used the, the, the scene of him dodging the milk and stuff. I'm like... You know, that's just the time it came out. There are a lot of other, you know, little pop it's culture. It's just a things. sign of the times. Back in the old days, everybody, every comedian was was uh, parroting the Matrix. Oh God! No, really? That's true. Was yeah, black I think and white. Uh, the CGI scary was movie. shit. Scary Movie was parodying the Matrix. Yeah. Uh, I remember when when the the killer in Scary Movie like dodged the pizza tray and then it like threw <laughs> out his back. Um, I think they that, did it in Shrek. They, they did a scene a lot like the one here where it's mid-kick and it's, the camera spins around. They did that in Shrek 2, I think. Or Shrek yeah, 1. Yeah. 
Yep, yep. We they, should like make a movie called... entirely composed of that. <laughs> just of all the Matrix parody clips. Just do really... the Matrix. Just 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 literally have me and Latex as 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 Trinity and Ian <laughs> as Neo. And I'm like, eh, hey, look at my butt. Look at my butt. It's in latex. You're gonna love it. Um, mm. but anyway, no, really, but my butt is actually quite in firm. In a plastic bag. In a plastic. No, dude, just get like super glue and super glue garbage bags to me, since we can't afford <laughs> latex. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I, there's there's the Matrix parody, and like people get my sick and tired really of that. Firm. I really don't care. I really don't. It. It's whatever. It's just that's when it came out. That's when it was popular. Um, you were saying. You were saying. Oh, okay. When did you say that the Oda Kirk said he was going to do a sequel? Uh, Ju- I, I was reading interviews back in July last year. Oh, okay. See, that's one of those things where I was looking on the Internet Movie Database and like there were people saying that they thought he would. They they had heard he was going to be doing a sequel like in 2005, and I'm wondering if it's kind of like one of those things where. Uh, kind of like Dan Aykroyd, uh, for years was talking about wanting to do Ghostbusters three, uh, and then mm-hmm. it ended up never happening. And I'm wondering if it's going to be something like that, where this is like the gem in his crown, and he's just going to keep kind of milking it for all it's worth. Like, hey, it's coming, guys. Don't worry. Someday we're going to get a sequel. But then he's just kind of trying just to make gonna the... remake it with girls. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, huh? That'd be a different movie. <laughs> Yeah, um, Just I don't know. Lena it's Dunham things, like, remaking Kong Pao. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It'd be one of those things where, like, I wouldn't mind if he like made a sequel to it. I'd, it'd be interesting to see, but he might just be doing it to like get himself some press. Um, he doesn't at the seem same like time, the guy like, to do if that, you're gonna actually. do it, to, like, like, if you're gonna try to get yourself press from a movie, that's more of a millennial you, thing. I don't think he'll be. You, no, no, no. Wouldn't you level. just like do? Wouldn't you talk about making an Ace Ventura sequel since that was actually a popular franchise? Well, yeah. Thing, this whole franchise thing is just like I don't like I don't think the older guard would sink to that level, you know? Because it, like the Jim Carrey, say what you will, he tried to do the whole serious thing for a while there, but trying to make a sequel out of '90s comedies just seems like like really pushing the envelope, but not in a good way. It's just like yeah, but I'm just saying like if you're gonna if you're gonna tease the idea of oh I'm gonna make a sequel to this this film in my career that I'm really famous for, why, why wouldn't you pick the like thing that was actually commercially successful and still very popular? That's as opposed to the, like the cult film. That's well, a good the thing point. Is, well, the thing is, it's just trying to recapture lightning. It's the same thing was with what's his name and Zoolander. Like like the new Zoolander was funny. I liked it. It was a funny film. Wait, that's already out. Yeah. <laughs> That's been out for a while, Ian. That totally passed me by. Oh, yeah, definitely. He had a hot, like, Italian or Arab girl, and her head, she had big boobs and a proper womanly figure. And, like, yeah, like, that man doesn't age, or he has plastic surgery. I don't know. It's, it's one of those things that ca- trying to redo, like, make sequels to comedies uh, or cult films or stuff like this. It's just, it seems like the thing to do nowadays. And I think him trying to do a sequel, like, I think if he doesn't parody this whole entire concept, like, he kind of started that thing. He kind of, he's the prototypical YouTube guy with the green screen, but with a budget. You know, he did it, he actually did it before the internet took away any value from it. You know, it's just... It's a, a, it's a funny movie. And I'm actually, it's a, yeah. oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, no, Ruben, you go ahead. Uh, yeah. I'm actually glad that uh, he had a career outside of this movie. And I, I had known for a very long time, like since the first time I saw this movie, I knew about those thumb movies and I never watched them. But I'm glad that he was involved with other things. Uh, like you were talking about Cowboys versus Aliens. And he did, uh, he was involved with the Jimmy Neutron movie. I don't know if you guys ever watched that show, but that was like, part of my childhood growing up was that Jimmy Neutron show. And he was a writer on that. Like, uh, and those are things that you don't think of, like, especially Cowboys versus aliens, but even Jimmy Neutron, which is not an especially serious show. It's not the same brand of humor as this. So you don't really think of this guy being involved with those things, but I'm really glad that he has been involved with stuff since this movie. And his career didn't just die after this movie. Uh, I'm glad Mm. he's done other things, even if it's not, the same kind of cult 
humor that we're so loving here. Dude, yeah. uh, a quick question, man. Yeah. Um, you're 27, right? Almost, yeah. Like, I don't get that. Like, Jimmy Neutron. Like, it, like that was my, like, I don't know. You I was, I was college... probably just a little too old for it when I, I watched it. I was probably uh, 13, and I was probably just outside of the demographic for it, but I watched it anyway. Yeah. That's so cool. Like, I do cartoons, too. Show. But I just, one question, like, have you been to college? Yeah. Have you, di did you do the drinking and the fucking and all that crazy shit? No, I was boring. <laughs> I, uh, oh. I went to class and then would go home and read. <laughs> That's cool, man. I would recommend you find a girl with fucked up hair and do some acid with her. It'll do you some good. I will make a note of that. Definitely, bro. <laughs> Cause you, like you're a dorky, bro. You're you're uh, you see like are you fat? No, I used to be fatter. I I've, I'm no. <laughs> dude, dude, I recommend that you get into shape, bro. Trust me. Like being fat sucks, dick. Juan, where are you going with this? <laughs> I'm trying to make friends, Ian. You know, this is what this movie does, but and it's just like, trust me, bro. You do, you take some supplements, you work out a bit more, get a job as a removalist. It's the best. You will, you, your body will hurt for a week, but after the week, like your balls start expanding because they'll go, holy shit, we need testosterone. Ruben, feel free to cut them off whenever you get tired. Nah, oh, okay. man, this is the best. Because were you, were you yeah? gonna say something, Ian, about uh, the Jimmy Neutron thing, or? No, I'd, oh. I'd, I'd seen that pop up in his career thing, too. And But, yeah, I do agree. I, I'm, I'm glad that he, he has other things in his career and this wasn't, like, the only thing. I do remember the marketing for this movie mentioning that he uh, he directed Ace Ventura, Pet Det or Ace, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. And I really think that is the right audience to market to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing. Uh, like that's that, that's, that's really kind of weird. lost now, isn't it? Like, that whole, like, ridiculous... Like, just a movie that... The, the whole thing about comedy is that, like, especially comedy film, what makes something funny is, is people taking the ridiculous seriously. Like, and that's what all these parody movies are supposed to be. You got, like, this serious, like, very familiar situation, but everyone's acting like... Like, not taking it at all seriously or, or taking it I way guess... too seriously. But I, it's it's, it's the thing is you got to take that, the ridiculous like, completely seriously. And the funny I think part, the only movie that's done that is the first Hangover movie. I, but, but I think you might be on to something. Well, I guess so. The first – after the first time, after the first, you know, capture – like com comedic lightning. Like like that. the Hangover movies are, are a perfect example. You know, it's just yeah. like the first one was just like, fucking hey, they're drunk and the, the ha 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 funny jokes. The second one is just exactly the same premise, but in a foreign location. And the mm -hmm. third one is, I haven't even watched the third or the second that, one. That's what I'm afraid of. If they do exactly. do a sequel, I'm afraid yeah. it's going to be that. It's going to be, let's, hey, you remember the guy with the cork pushed out of his chest? Let's bring him back. And yeah. let, you, you remember the cow? Well, like, I would find if they brought them back, like if they did it in the way that they set up in the movie, yeah, right? Yeah. But the thing if, is, if this is supposed to be an old 70s out. film. I mean, like how much footage, like... Is this was this just a one-off movie? I mean, like literally, if they didn't ha don't have any more footage to green screen. Well, apparently, all the actors have been in other things. I mean, he's you know he's taking a a proper film. It's not like it was just a you know bunch of friends got together. The the actors have been in other things. And like, would you really need anyone else from the original film besides Ling? Yeah, because she... Betty's dead, and it would it'd be. As awesome as it would be to have Betty be back, <laughs> Betty is dead in the movie, so you can you can write that off. Master Tang could have a much smaller role. I'm sure there's footage that they didn't use of him from that movie, and you could probably but find then other again, stuff. Like, like that. The, these actors might be coming back, but they might be playing different roles. I mean, are you saying that these vaguely similar-looking Asian people, like if they're acting differently from how they did in the first film? I mean, it would be just like the, the, ah, they just use the same actor from a different movie. I mean, otherwise, well, I mean, but, like, but then again, you have you to consider that? maybe these actors were typecast and they kind of played those similar roles through many. I wouldn't be surprised. Movies. I mean, it's a it's a low budget 70s 
uh, Hong Kong Kung Fu movie. You really think so, that yeah. these were the most prestigious actors ever? Mm. Mm, I guess so. But you know, like, you, like, I just, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you could find them in other things playing these exact same types of roles. Yeah. You guys were comparing this to uh, The Hangover, a uh, m- much more recent movie. I was thinking about movies that are similar to this from, like, the older days, and not, not so much, like, technologically, like uh, Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, but, like, I was thinking of Mel Brooks. Like, this really gave me a Mel Brooks vibe when I was watching it, and it's weird, because Ian and I had talked about Spaceballs before, and I don't really like Spaceballs. It's, uh, I, out of all the Mel Brooks movies I've seen, and I've only seen, I think, three or four of them, Spaceballs is probably one of my least favorites, but this has a sort it, in a way, this reminds me a lot of Spaceballs, where I didn't like Spaceballs because it was like, you've got just scene after, like, it didn't felt feel organic, it was like, here's a scene, and then here's another scene, and like, they're funny scenes, but it didn't feel like a movie, and this kind of sort of feels like that, but at the same time, I'm laughing when this movie does it, but with Spaceballs... Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. You'd never seen Spaceballs until recently, right? That's right, yeah. I only saw it the okay, first time and, early. Okay, and you saw this for the first time when you were how old? Oh, oh I was probably... Okay, Jewy, uh, mm, mm, parody of Star Wars. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what was that? I might have been 14. Uh, I, I don't... Yeah, so like... I, I think there's... Milan, can you mute your mic if you're having a conversation? I think there might be something to the idea of of missing the boat for a movie like this yeah um because i i can't imagine like many like there's there's certainly people who could because my fiance watched it and she loved it the first time we watched through it um there's there's certainly people who can get into this no matter what age they are because they can just connect with that like style of humor but I think at a certain point, you just miss the boat for a movie of this type. And then there are people who never even had a ticket. Like, there are people who will never find it funny. It's kind of like the an, another thing, like, older school to compare it to would, I guess, be uh, the, like, Monty Pyth- Python films. Because, like, y- you have that idea of, like, people just don't get it because they didn't see it at the right age. And and I think that's the same thing with Spaceballs. If if you don't see it when you're in like middle school, when you're not supposed to be watching a movie like this, but you get to anyway, or even better if you're in elementary school and you're really not supposed to be watching it, but you get to anyway, then I think it really works for you. But if you see it too late, like you might still laugh at some of it, but I don't think you'll ever love it as much as someone who saw it young. I think that's a good point. Do you think yeah. this is similar to Mel Brooks? Do you guys think that? Oh, definitely. Yeah, well, um, the thing it's is, a little it's, less smart, but yeah. Well, the thing with that is, is just these types of movies, the, these types of comedies, it's it, it it hits you right in the guts, you know, because it's a positive memory because laughter is a thing that makes life worth living and comedies are the best and that's the thing when these types of movies are, exist in the ether to just like when you're just having a bad time you know you just kind of everything's kind of eh you pop this in with somebody you know you watch it and and you just laugh you you smoke a couple of cones you eat a pot cookie you, you order some pizza with a girl hey eh? And then you go, hey, let's watch Kung Pao together. And she's like, oh, it's a stupid movie. I'm smart. I got a degree in social sciences or whatever. And then... This is like getting very specific. Yeah, man. <laughs> and then it's just like... And then she you know, has a pie cookie. If you put on Kung Pao, she shits her pants. That's right, man. You, If you make a girl shit her pants laughing, you got a heart. Because... <clears throat> To make you get through a girl, you get to a girl's heart. Yeah, that's, you gotta make her laugh. If you don't make her laugh, you're fucked. That's I, I don't it. know. That reminds me. I don't know if you you guys ever saw the TV show How I Met Your Mother, but there was an episode where Ted finds out that his girlfriend has never seen Star Wars, and so he tries to get he he starts watching Star Wars with her, and then he's like doing commentary throughout the whole movie. So she kicks him out, and she hates the movie. Uh, and he's thinking to himself, if she doesn't like it, there's no way they can be together. And I'm thinking that's like what this movie is. It's like if if you if they don't understand this movie, then it's just like you we can't be friends anymore. This is the Almost. most retarded thing in the world. If you base your relationship on whether or not you like the same movie or not, you're fucking retarded. Oh, I agree. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, I, I, I do think there is something to that. Like if, if they don't get it, there's no explaining it. If you don't, if you aren't a kind, the kind of person to like laugh at silly noises, then this just, okay, it's yeah. not going to work for you. And, okay. and like just silly noises are just, are one of the few forms of comedy that aren't based on pain. Mm-hmm. Um, I go, you, you'll hear people talk about what makes something funny, and you know what really is an interesting line of discussion is talking about why something is funny. Exactly. Let me tell you. This whole um, thing, like, the, this movie appeal, like, it's whether or not you got your head stu- It's how far you got your head stuffed up your own ass. Like... Yeah, and, like, so, like, like when you It depends, like, if your head is, like, full-on converged up to the neck, you won't find mm-hmm. this funny. If just yeah. the mouth is poking out, the, you know, the extended asshole, then it's just like, hey, you might laugh a bit. And, and like, the, the when, when your ears are out, you're like, oh, my God, it's just the top of your head that's stuck up your ass. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yay. Um, um, no, like, when you hear people talk about, like, what makes something funny, they'll often, like, dwell on, oh, well, pain makes something funny. People have made videos about it. It's, it's a boring-ass topic of discussion. Mm. But, like, funny noises are one of the things that, like, if you find just random noises funny, there's no explaining that. You just do. It's a silly noise. You can't explain it. And this movie just has stuff like that. Like, even when you start up the DVD, it goes, warning, this movie may contain odd sounds. <laughs> and it's like one of the little fucking mouth noises goes by. So it's just, oh, God, it's so funny. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. Like, this is a, like this doesn't give a shit. It's literally one <laughs> of those, like, like this, this has no pretensions to any. Like it, it, it's not trying to. It's not fronting. You know what I'm saying? It, movies mm-hmm. like I, I hate people and movies that front. You know, like it, it was something. Uh, 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 like they're trying to present something that they're not. And it's just mm-hmm. like, why would you go to the effort? Like it seems exhausting. So why not just be yourself? I think. And so uh, it's just yeah. I think uh, I want to hit on something Milan mentioned earlier. Uh, you said this is a guy who makes a movie. It's something that he would enjoy watching if he was an audience member. And you're right. That is a very risky thing because sometimes the audience doesn't want the same thing that the creator wants. But Michael this was Bay. one of this was one in a million where it just so happens that other people thought that what he thought was funny was funny. And uh, well, the thing he, is. He seems like the type of guy that, like, he knows how to make people laugh. Because if you're, like, really frightened, like, oh, will this make people laugh? Then you don't know what's funny. If you're freaking yeah, out there's, whether there's or not, you know, you know, like, this is obviously funny. It's retarded, mm-hmm. but it's funny. Yeah, there's it, that's the thing about this movie. It is stupid as shit, but it's hilarious. Exactly. There's no and that's thought a simple equation to do. There's, there's no p- thought put into any of the jokes. There's nothing like like clever. And I like clever, you know, huh? it takes you a minute to get at humor. There's none of that here. It is <laughs> it is 100% stupid jokes and weird noises. And if you cannot get into that, I'm, I'm sorry for you. Uh, it, it is something that, like, even though I watched it like a million times when I was a kid, I don't really want to go back and watch too many times now yeah um like i watched it about a year or two ago and then i came back to it because i've just been thinking about it a lot for a year i don't think i want to go back to this movie for at least another four to five years oh really the thing is you know comedies is that you have to you can't you you have watching comedies and if you watch comedies too much you kill the buzz like mm, comedy yeah. like, like like movies are like fucking like they're meant to be a spice to life if mm-hmm. you can if you make your life all about movies then you have no life and it's just like if you watch the same comedy like a thousand it's, times in I a can't... week like the the jokes lose their luster you know what i'm saying mm. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. It is one of those things where, like, if you watch it too much, it's going to lose itself on you. I think the cure for that, if, like, if you want to watch it again, but but you remember it, I guess, too well, I think the cure for that is to watch it with someone else and have it be their first time. That's exactly what I was thinking, yeah. Because then you're, yeah, you're because... experiencing what they're experiencing. It's like you're watching it for the first time, even though you know what's coming. 
Um, you're, yeah, you're... it's like you're leeching off of them. And, yeah. like, I, I guess the benefit of doing it that way is when you know a really funny part is getting to come up, you can just, like, watch them watching the thing yeah. in order to anticipate and be, like, laughing at their reaction as much as you are at the, the thing itself. Like, Haley and I were just watching through um, Archer. We're, re- we're re-watching through that show right now. And, like, there was an episode that we just finished today where the the character Carol is on, like, acid and, like, Cheryl... She changes her name. Shut up. She's <laughs> she's on acid, and she's just been, like, um, talking about ostriches the whole episode, and then all of a sudden a fucking ostrich just shows up and starts talking in this really weird voice, <laughs> and she's the only one that sees it. And I look over it Like, I got, like, a snicker out of it. I didn't even remember that. I only got a snicker out of it. I look over at Haley, and she's, like, busted and got, like, laughing so hard that she's not able to make sounds come out of her mouth. And sometimes that kind of reaction to something is funnier than the joke itself. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the whole... <laughs> yeah, comedy is, is meant... Like, you can't, like... What kind of sad, lonely man watches a comedy on his iPhone alone in his room? And Comedies he... are the worst thing to watch in your, on your own, yeah. especially especially if you go watch it in a theater. Oh, yeah. Like, if you watch a comedy alone in a theater, but there are, like, other people, <laughs> it's the worst <laughs> feeling ever. Because, like, you're laughing, and you want to, like, validate your laughter by, like, looking at someone else. And they just look at you like you're fucking crazy. Wasn't there an episode of Frasier where Frasier went to a restaurant by himself and everyone thought everyone was embarrassed for him that he was asking for a table for one? Uh, that's reminding me of that. Uh, that's how I that, that's what I do. I, I make pop culture references to other things. I feel like yeah. I, I feel like that's something that happened on that show. Um, I think that it sounds. I think that um, you you when you said you're not gonna want to watch it for another four or five years. At first, I was surprised because I was thinking, really, that seems like a really long time. But then I was trying to remember the last time I watched it, and I can't remember before this week when I was watching it for the show. I can't remember when the last time I watched the whole movie. Uh, I will sometimes, uh, when I'm in the mood to watch a few of my favorite scenes, I'll go on YouTube and find just like a quick 30 second clip. But I usually I don't know when the last time I saw this movie was. So, but, but, but that's that's the thing, isn't it? Like, this like this whole YouTube clip thing. I mean, if you look, if you, like, it kind of it's like cocaine, but with dreams and things you like, because it's just like, like why? Like, have you watched clips of this same movie, but not the entire thing in its entirety? Uh, yeah, it's the same. Yeah, I, you know, and, and sometimes I'll just be like, you know what, I'm just going to watch the whole movie. I'm not going to watch any of it. Like, uh, I have this weird thing where I watch Escape from New York on Christmas Eve every year. And yeah, so I, I try not to watch that movie at all throughout the year. I want to save it for Christmas Eve. But then, yeah. like, this movie, if it's like, oh, I'm, I want to go watch the chicken go cluck cluck. Like, that's my favorite part of the movie. What? The, the part you can go cluck cluck cow go moo damn it i broke my yeah, i know i was just about to say we're we made it an hour though so uh but yeah that's like you know Protein. if i'm just like you know i'm in a maybe i had a bad day at work so i just want to watch that scene on youtube real quick but like for the whole movie i think you're right like it's something that if you watched it once a year you would probably get tired of it you would probably want to savor it and just take it just once every so often yeah, it, yeah, it's it, like it's really one of those things, right? It, unless you're watching it for the first time, um, you really don't want, or unless you're watching it with someone for their first time, you really don't want to go back to this too often yeah. because as much the fun as it is, is if you're gonna it go can back really to a lose film, its, its magic. If you're gonna go back to a film, you might as well make it an event. If you're gonna rewatch something, like it, like it, just make it special. Like if you're like if you, like Kung Pao or whatever, whatever the type of movie you want to watch. Like you mentioned, uh, watching you know uh, Escape from New York every Christmas. That mm. and you know you watch it every year and you don't watch it the rest of the year. Yeah. That's making that movie special, you know. And and it's just a fucking movie from the '80s. But you know, as goofy and and whatever it is and it might be, you make it special because you like it. Mm-hmm. And that's the that's what makes you know this point. But looking at like clips random clips of a thing you like on, on online of a movie you like kind of takes away from the from the completed work if you know what i'm saying 
Yeah. It's just mm. like if you're just gonna watch clips of a movie on your phone and not watch the entire movie and when you do get around to watching the entire movie you get to that part and that part's just ruined for you because you watch that part so many times online on a little screen that seeing it on the big screen kind of takes away from its magic it kind of mm-hmm. it's isolating a cer- a little part in a, in a larger piece and focusing on that little piece to the point where the anything that you know any kind of stream of consciousness that went through that scene is lost because you've overused it. Yeah, I, can get I agree. Head. It's it's one of those things where like, but the best things about this movie are the stuff that requires no context exactly. and is just naturally silly. So it it almost lends itself to clips, but you have to like refrain from watching them. And interestingly, I've watched clips from it here and again too, just because it's been on my mind lately. And so maybe that like had some effect on um, my ability to laugh at the, this watch through. But I think I enjoy what like I think I enjoy talking about and quoting the movie with people that have seen it more than I do just watching those isolated bits or possibly even the movie itself. Yeah, because then you're engaging with someone else. It's kind of like what you said, watching it with someone who's never seen it before, it's contagious. Their excitement and their enjoyment of these things for the first time is leeching onto you. And watching it on YouTube can be funny. Uh, I also agree with what Milan said, uh, that it also kind of takes it out of context and you know, you're not viewing it as a work anymore. You're just viewing part of it. Um, but when you're, when you meet someone else who's also seen this movie, suddenly you're both in a minute, you're laughing as hard as you've laughed all week because you're both remembering your funniest parts and you realize, Hey, this guy who I didn't think I had that much in common with his favorite scene in that movie is my favorite scene. And so you're, you know, meeting somebody and you're uh, realizing yeah, it's a great icebreaker. Yeah. Yeah, and like that's that's what cult films are. Like I, I don't like the you know, I'm gonna retitle this video. It was gonna be just Kung Pao under the fist with the year. I'm gonna like put an a, uh ampersand and cult films because like that's what a cult film is, is it has that power in a way that other films don't. And I don't like that the term cult film has been thrown around so much because there's no cult around a lot of the films that people attach that um that name to. Like, the, the whole idea of a cult film is it's a movie that not a lot of people have seen, but that is, like, somehow, like, permeated itself through culture without becoming super popular. And the people that have seen it, like, make references in it and have in-jokes with each other centered around the film. Yeah, like, that's like why Rocky Horror Picture Show. What? Like Godzilla Bukake. That, sure, why not? Or... <laughs> A more notable example, Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's a movie. I've never seen that movie. I don't really want to because I'm just not in on it at this point. But I know that there's an in on it thing. Me too. I, yeah, like like Rocky just Horror Picture Show. Just a lot of 40-year-old goths. Make... Just a lot of really old gothic people with mental illness. Yeah, but like there, there are you certain have no groups idea, that if, like, bro. if you they, give them they a love line, that fucking movie. It, it, yeah, yeah. If you destroying. give if you give people if you give people in certain groups a line from one of the Rocky Horror Picture Show songs, they will fucking burst out into the song. You cannot go to the theater when they're playing Rocky Horror Picture Show. Like, could you? Uh, Connor works at a theater, and I want to talk to him and see if he, they've ever had a Rocky Horror Picture Show night because apparently it's the worst possible night to be working in a movie. Theater theater because everyone that's there sings every song comes in costumes that they shouldn't be wearing in public (laughs) and like when they're they like throw the popcorn that they're eating up in the air and like run around the theater and shit and like that would be the worst fucking night to be working yeah i've heard about people throwing food at the screen during rocky horror picture show um you know you were saying that you're not a great time though (laughs) Uh, you're you were saying you're not in on Rocky Horror Picture Show. I'm not either. I've never seen it, and I, at this point, I kind of feel like it's like what you were saying about Spaceballs. Like it's too late at this point. Uh, but for yeah, me, it's, it's never too fun. late. It's a comedy. If it makes you laugh, you'll be in on it. Uh, but I no, because like at a certain point, just that style of humor can't get to you anymore. I think. And I'm I'm the I same disagree. way. I I'm disagree. The, you mentioned. You guys uh, are great. Uh, what was it? You mentioned uh, Monty Python. I've never seen any of the Monty Python movies. 
Um, what? I know, but I've heard people my whole life quote those movies, and it got to a point where I was like, it stopped, like, I don't know if it could be funny to me, because I've heard people, like, quote entire scenes. Like, I was with a group of guys one time, and I'm not kidding, for ten minutes, they were, all they did was quote that movie, uh, I think it was uh, not Life of Brian, Holy Grail. They were quoting yeah, for it, ten minutes. It's probably the Black Knight scene. And, like, Cap's the same way. Cap, like, says... I'm, I'm echoing on your end, Ruben. Oh. Um, Cap says that, that he's never seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail. or Well, he hadn't seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And by the time he finally got around to watching it, it didn't work for him anymore because people had just quoted every... Spoiled every funny line for him. Yeah. yeah. It's like waiting till you're 40 until you fuck your first black girl. <laughs> No, it's not like that at all. <laughs> I love it's how for just a second like, we were all speechless at that. I had to actually think about, like, does that apply in any way whatsoever? <laughs> and the answer is no. It totally um, applies, no, and you know it in your heart. No, there, there is really that, that whole thing. And that's that's another part of cult films, is you cannot miss the boat. You You have to see it at a certain point in your life, otherwise it just won't work for you. Um, like... Right. Not necessarily that the comedy won't play, but just the particular style of the comedy all placed throughout a film won't work for you anymore. That applies to this. That applies to Spaceballs. Just, I don't know if I watch Spaceballs now, and it was the first time I ever saw it, that my sensibilities of humor would work for that movie anymore. Maybe in, like, an isolated context, like, my... my um, sensibilities of humor still work for Family Guy at isolated context, like, out of out of context bits... But not as a whole. I can't watch more than one episode of Family Guy. So I, I probably, if I'd never seen Spaceballs and waited till just now, I don't know if I'd be able to watch it. I like Wait it, a second. It, What's, what, what is it about Family Guy that makes you unable to watch it? Is it the plot? Well, it's just, it gets really old really quick. The, the constant cutaways, nothing. It, it just like, the, I can watch an episode of Family Guy and I'll laugh at a couple bits but, like, there's fucking, like, four-hour marathons of Family Guy that play every night on different... Yeah, but the thing about Family Guy is it's just fucking do that. so... Un- just very cruel and ugly. And it's just, like, it, it, it also started happening with The Sim- Simpsons a while ago. Is that, you know, it, like, the old Simpsons, they, they, they were, like, these very... Where, where, it was, have you know, it, it was funny, but there were these very sweet family moments, you know, just yeah, like yeah, it had heart. Yeah, it had heart, but like somewhere in, in somewhere along the line, there, that heart vanished, and they started talking about oh, Marge leaving. No, th- that's a problem too, but that's not why yeah. I don't find it funny. Yeah, but I, that, I that's the thing. If there's no heart, I, I didn't really found. I, I didn't find anything funny. It was just like I don't know. I'm the pretty whole, sure like, I give there was no point. sense of levity to it. No, I, I get what yeah, you're saying. And that's the same I'm pretty what, what, sure I could Ian, 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 I just want to finish clips. this point, Ian. Come on. Go ahead. It's just like, and that's, that's the same thing with Family Guy. It's just like, it's funny, but in that really cruel way. Like, Family Guy does, like, it's goofy and ridiculous, and I laugh at it. But, like, at some points, like, something really just, just, ugh, will happen. You know, like, somebody will get really, really hurt. And it's not like ha ha hurt. It's just like, just like get like the skin no, I, I cut off, saying. and it's just, it's it just kind of kills the you know you're you're having a good time, and it's just like oh for fuck's sake, man. Like yeah, it, I get I get yeah. what you're saying, and I'm I'm just saying like I'm pretty sure I could send you like isolated little cutaway gags, and you'd probably at least chuckle or maybe even laugh at those. Some of those can be funny. Some of the like one one liners that characters will have can be funny it's just as a whole when you take the piece as a whole it doesn't work for you anymore and some of that is because the tone just it, it lost its heart but i think some of it is just the that style of humor doesn't work for you as your sensibilities about comedy grow and evolve last night i watched jack and jill for the first time oh christ why <laughs> i don't know like i i just and I, I don't really listen to the internet you know it's just like well was the internet right I don't know. There was a real like. I was, I don't really see why people are angry at it. I mean, <laughs> it's it's it's, it's, it's actually like... pretty funny in a fucked up way. Like it's it's like weird kind of. I want to fucking shoot myself type of humor. 
But it's like there's this one really like if you're gonna talk about isolated incidents in really shitty movies like that that happen to be of excellent quality, I mean, the just it's Adam Sandler in drag, and he's mm-hmm. like t- being a dick to Johnny Depp, and you know yeah, fucking I... what's his name Scarface wants to fuck him. Mm-hmm. That con- it's, conceptually, it's, like... No, it's like Batman v Superman. Conceptually, it should work, and it does in a weird way. Well, I guess in that way, it's un- completely unlike Batman v Superman. <laughs> but I mean, it's just like, like there's that scene where fucking what's his name, Pacino, Al Pacino mm-hmm. loses his fucking mind on stage while playing Edward the Third. I think it was. And it's like that scene alone, just seeing Pacino lose his shit on stage and yell at somebody, like lose a fucking phone. Like in the beginning, it was like, who's on the phone? And then it's just, you know, that second time that happens, it's his phone and he just has this ju- just insane conversation with Adam Sandler pretending to be himself in drag. And like that you. in itself, um, that's funny. Like I, yeah, there's, it, there's it's isolated funny. instance. It wasn't ha ha. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, but that's the thing is when you're writing comedy, there will be like if, if you're writing an entire movie trying to make it a comedy, you have to at least get one laugh. It's got to happen eventually. But that doesn't make it just because one person laughed at one joke in your movie. That doesn't make it a funny movie. Right. Um, like that's that's the thing is like that. This is a kind of like a separate topic, though. So I want to get back to the, the Kung Pao movie. It's just interesting that like I don't I, I completely understand people who are older who can't get into this. But at a certain point, I'm like, you, you got to catch the boat at the right time. You, you, there are some people who missed the boat and I'm always sad that they did. But the, the, there are other people who never even had a ticket. Um, and I, I really think that's the best way I can describe this movie is just don't miss the boat on it because you can also God, it's such a fun experience. That way, and that breaks your heart, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, okay. Is there anything else we want to talk about? Oh wait, I, I remember one other thing I wanted to make sure we talked about. Um, so this was this came out on DVD in kind of like in you know really random stupid shit that like doesn't have anything to do with anything, but. This came out on DVD kind of like back in the early days of DVDs when they actually had special features. I miss those And not like, yeah, not like just a special feature, like a lot of special features. Like it took me over an hour to watch all the special features today. Oh, really? I haven't seen them yet. I I watched this movie three days ago and I saw that there was special features and I was like, yeah, I'll get to that later this week and I haven't watched them yet. I'm excited now because I love special features. I... I'd... I mean, like, the cut scenes aren't as good as they could be, so you can tell why they were cut kind of thing, uh-huh. but it's it's kind of fun to see. And there's one scene with Betty in it that's really funny. Um, there's there's stuff here and there that, that works and doesn't. Uh, it's just interesting that, that it has as much content as it does. There were, like, promos, apparently, that they aired on Fox, and I'll let you enjoy them for, for yourself, but... Just stuff like that. I just like that there are special features on a DVD and the special features section. But the the ones to really talk about, and that I didn't really get all the way through because I just I you know I just watched the movie. I didn't want to watch it again. Right. Um, there are substitute audio tracks. Huh. There's like one where I think it's like all being voiced by one guy, but it's like in this proper English accent. <laughs> So it it sounds like they call it like the the lost tome edition or something like that, and then there's one where it's all the original audio. Oh wow! So you have the the original actors speaking in Mandarin, but then you have whatever Steve Odekirk was like improving on the set. Oh wow! That's that sounds. That, I definitely need to see that. That is actually pretty funny. Yeah, I, I only watched about like ten minutes of that one, but that was a lot funnier because he's all like, he's like. You are a reptile, of course. I came for your lemon meringue pie. Just <laughs> stupid shit like that. Um, I, so yeah, th- those are kind of just neat little extra special features. My God, who could believe it? Yeah, that's that's all I wanted to talk about. Yeah, that, that, that makes me excited to watch those. I uh, I probably would have forgotten about those, but now that you've mentioned that, I'm definitely going to need to uh, go back and uh, see those again, or, or go mm. go through and look at them interesting yeah i mean it's 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 definitely worth it um 
there's a music video, you know, oh. check it out. <laughs> I, I, uh, I was also surprised, you mentioned this like at the very beginning of the video, I was surprised that you said that Odakirk did all the voices except for, uh, which one did you say, uh, the uh, Whoa? Whoa. Uh, I, the I'm surprised because I was like, I would have bet everything that Frank Oz did the voice of Ling, uh, Frank Oz who did Miss Piggy, uh, Miss Piggy and uh, Yoda, like I was dead certain that that was Ling. Like what, er, no, it's it's all Steve. That Oderkirk. is amazing. Um, like that's a... the the tip off for me that it was all one person, or that it it might all be one person. I just decided to watch the credits a little more closely this time. Was that the narrator and Master Tang sound really really similar? Yeah, and uh, there are times when uh, um, Master Tang and uh, Betty sound a little similar. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so it's it's kind of easy to pick up that that it is the same person, but once you know, it's it makes it I think just a little bit better. Yeah, because he's like constantly talking to himself throughout the whole movie. Um, and I'm I'm, I, I cur- I'm curious if he did like when he's recording, if he would record all of his lines as Betty and then all of his lines as Ling, or if he would do them together. Uh, you know, we mentioned Family Guy earlier. Uh, Seth MacFarlane, apparently, when he has, like, Stewie talking to Brian, and these are two characters that he voices, he would go back and forth in the same audio tract, and he'll be talking to himself in two different voices. And I'm wondering if Odekirk did that, or if he would just do all one voice and then go back later and do another voice. Interesting. I'm not I'm not sure. Um I, like I said, he just kind of dubbed them in as they were, like, making rough cuts daily. Dailies, that's the word for it. Yeah. As they were making dailies of the movie, and, and he would just do the voice there, and he was planning to replace it later. But I I don't know if he – maybe he, like – maybe it's a mix of the two. Uh-huh. Maybe he was initially just going back and forth between silly voices as, like, placeholders, and then he went and refined it a bit later on. Right. It, yeah. That that Im, that would impress me if it was largely, you know, I I know you had mentioned that earlier about how a lot of it was just him just kind of improving. That would impress me if most of it was improv. I would feel like there'd have to be a little bit of fine tuning going on later. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure. Like, you know, I, I bet you a lot of the, like really funny lines were improv, and then the rest of the scene was worked to make that line work even better. Yeah. You know. Probably. Um. Like, you know, I, I bet you, like, your favorite scene, the, the one where he's walking through doing the chicken go cluck cluck thing, uh-huh. I bet you that song was improv Yeah, uh, or at least uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe the beginning. Uh, like, there's no way I'd be able to improv the second verse where he's doing lemur and ostrich and <laughs> stuff like that. Like, that would have to have, like, I, if I tried to improv that, I'd just start, and this is probably why I would be a terrible improv comedian, but if I tried to improv that, it would just be me busting out laughing once I start saying lemur. Like, I'd just start laughing myself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, okay, I want to wrap up and get to scores, but we did a really good job. I'm really proud of us for getting through this. And Milan's looks like he dropped out of the call by mistake or something. I'm really proud of us, though, for getting through this without quotes. For the most part, yeah. So, we, we did good. Yeah, we, we, I, I was the only one to break the rule. I'm sorry, but I couldn't help it. Um, so I think, like, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll give you an out so you can pick a different one besides the song. What's your favorite quote from the movie besides the, the chicken go cluck cluck oh, song? Oh, boy. It's probably, I, I do like them feisty. Um, mm-hmm. Really just anything Betty says. Uh, like, I, I remember... It was after I had first experienced this movie, I would just quote him out of context with my friends. Like, I, I remember frequently quoting, I do like him feisty, uh, and it's Betty, you son of a pig. The name is Betty. Like, those lines just crack me up. I, I would probably give it to, I do like him feisty. Mm, okay. Um, I think mine is a Betty line, too. But just, ah, oh, there's so many good ones. I love Master Tag. I love The Chosen One. Um, Ling's hilarious. I cannot, I cannot think of the newest Nintendo console without thinking of Ling. <laughs> wee, wee, wee. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I'll never be able to think of that. But, like, seriously, I think my favorite line is Betty, when they're like, 
when he's just sitting there because it's it's not even really the line itself it's all the editing around it because you could tell they were just running out of clips and they needed an explanation so he just came up with something uh-huh. is what he's like i am a great and powerful magician <laughs> yeah. <Your> clothes are red. <laughs> and then like throughout that whole scene every time you think that they're done with that joke he'll come back and say your clothes are black and like he comes back and he's black wearing clothes. black clothes that, that yeah. that's a good one yeah yeah, I fucking love that. It's the, it's one of the few purely visual gags, but I just fucking love it to death. Yeah. <sighs> oh. Um. So what what is our our rule on rating? We we do something that pertains to the movie. Yep. Uh, one out of five. You, you use usually a va- a noun from the movie, but you can use a sound if you'd like. Okay. Um. Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm first. gonna go with. Uh. This is hard for me. I'm going to go with four spinning claws out of five. Uh, iron claws out of five. Because gotcha. I think this movie is, if anything, just for the technology and the visual effects and everything, I think it deserves very high praise. But also just how gut-bustingly funny it is. I think it, it kicks it up. Uh, like we said, you know, it's very stupid, but I... I can't be, it doesn't bother me that it's that stupid. Yeah, I'd, I'd tend to agree with you. Um, you said four or four or 4.5? I said four out of five. Yeah, I think I'm going to give it, I would have given it 4.5, but I have to drop an extra point because I don't think some of the visuals hold up as well as I'd remembered. Um, and that's just unfortunate. You know, there's nothing they can do about it. Like, interestingly, this has not been re-released on Blu-ray. Oh, really? So they could remaster and redo some of these effects to make them look better. I would not mind if they did that. And your, and your um, rating would probably go up if they did that? Yeah, so mine mine is going to be a four. I'll give it four <laughs> out of five. Um, just because Betty's hilarious. Oh, yeah. And probably the best character in the movie. Uh, the Chosen has his moment. Yeah, I think Betty is probably the best, too. Okay, that'll do it for this week's episode of Geeky Gentlemen, everyone. Um, Milan will, of course, have given this movie a five just because that's that's what he does. He always gives everything a perfect score. Um, you know, it's it's a stupid movie. It's so much fun. And if you watch this, like, hour and a half or whatever video, you obviously enjoy it, too, because no one would sit through this if they'd never seen the movie. No one. Right. Uh so yeah everyone everyone thanks for watching uh until next time i'm the philosopher and uh i uh, i don't know what i am i'm the comic skit 2099 there you go (laughs) and we are your geeky gentlemen and we will be discussing things